It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding! Hey there, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated. Welcome to chapter two of the rainbow scarab beetle modeling demonstration. So here's kind of where I left off at the end of last chapter. I actually did a fair amount of work offline, uh, but it was essentially retopologizing the model. Retopology is kind of a long, boring, tedious uh, process, so I'm not going to do demonstrate it here uh, in the video, but I will just talk about the end result, a little bit about why I took the time to do it. Um, you don't necessarily have to retopologize your model. It depends what your goal is. What I want to do is I want to create a model that I could use maybe in a game situation, maybe something I can rig and animate, or maybe something that would work in Sketchfab or Marmoset, you know, that I could post online. And, and in those situations, I really want to kind of have the option of having a low poly model. And I also want to make sure that I can create UV texture coordinates for the model so I can create some nice textures. And in order to do that, I like to retopologize my model. But again, that's kind of just me. Um, if I zoom in here on the head, which is what I'm going to focus on next, I'm going to turn on the wireframe. And if I zoom in really closely, you can see that it has an okay topology. This is this was created using a Z remesher, which is pretty good and probably decent enough for like a like an insect that has an exoskeleton that doesn't necessarily deform like a human face would. But if you zoom in, you can see that it's kind of these edge loops kind of curl around this part. They don't really follow along as nicely as I'd like. So I did take the time to retopologize all the parts of the model. So I'm going to switch over to that newer version right here. So this is the retopologized version. And I did do this by hand using the modeling toolkit in Maya. But what you'll see is if I go down to the lowest subdivision level, it's very low. Uh, so the head here is only 1,237 uh, polygons. If I go to the highest level, it is 1.26 million polygons. But you'll also notice that, you know, the edges here, the way they flow, they kind of hug the surface or the edges of the surface a bit better. You can see how they follow along with the contours and the detail a little bit better. And it's going to make it easier for me to kind of split up the model into nice um, UV shells for texturing. I know that's more technical 3D stuff. If you're not a 3D modeler, that part is probably going to be meaningless to you. But like I said, I do want to kind of explain my approach here. So I did do this for all the parts of the model. It did take some time. If I switch over to Maya, you can see here's what the retopologized version looks like. So essentially, let me hide this one and I'm going to show this one real quick. So let's turn off X-ray for a moment. So this is what I exported from ZBrush. You can see that kind of topology, the Z remesh topology. Export is an FBX from, from ZBrush with all the other parts of the model. Then I took each part, selected it. Turn on X-ray, made it live by clicking on this button. Then in the modeling toolkit, turn on quad draw, and literally just a big game of connect the dots. Made a bunch of polygons and kind of just dragged them out so that they would follow along the surface. And the end result several hours later, let's get to that. And let's turn off live mode for a second, hide this. Bring back this version. Here is the end result of that. It looks kind of goofy and very low polygon, but that's the point. You can see along a lot of these surfaces, the edge flow goes along right along the edge. And one of the reasons that this is useful is so that I can do things like easily insert an edge loop. So let me turn on wireframe unshaded here. Let's say I wanted to add an edge, light, edge loop to tighten up this edge here. If I click on this with, whoops, there we go insert edge loop, you can see how it follows along around the entire perimeter of the surface. That's one of the advantages of doing retopology. It's, you know, something that is very, you know, technical. It's also, some people might consider it to be overkill for this particular model, but that's just the way that I roll. I also did a couple other things, like I split up the abdomen, you know, before in the original model, I just have a piece that is kind of has these divisions between the turgites kind of just drawn in. What I've done here, if I've actually selected, or I've actually created these um, different sections from different pieces of geometry. So it looks not good right here, but the next stage is to start going in and kind of really refining that detail. And like this right here is a placeholder. I don't think that that's accurate. 
some of these other things I'd like to improve the accuracy of. So that's going to require some research on my part. But um, what I think I want to do next is go in here and talk about working on the head a little bit, maybe improving the detail on here. I mean, I think that detail on the head is pretty good. The detail on like um, the elytra here, I don't like this detail, so I'm going to redo that. It's just not quite right. It looks neat, but it's not quite the quality that I see in the photographs of the beetle online. And same here, this could use some touching up as well. So that's what I'm going to do next. Just going to go and start refining the parts of the model. One last thing before I get into working on the head. If you're wondering how I got the detail onto these low res versions, so this is the retopologized version I made in Maya, the highest subdivision level, it's got all this nice detail. Um, the, re the way that I did that is, uh, it's a little bit old school, it's definitely tedious, but I brought in each part and appended, appended it as a subtool to the original model, this model right here, and then used projection to project the detail from this version of the model onto the same part of the new version part of the model. Again, really tedious, um, but that's how I went about doing it. So that at the highest subdivision level, we have a nice detailed version of the model. And of course, I had to take a few seconds for self-promotion. If you're wondering about the exact process of what I just described and you want to see it in full detail, well, I'm going to direct you to the Noman Workshop, to their website, thenomanworkshop.com, and check out my long extended video on hyperrealistic insect design. So I can see from the chapter list down here, I have a whole bunch of chapters. Yeah, so they're like 21 chapters detailing my process for doing the types of things that I'm kind of doing as an overview in this particular video. So check that out if you want more detail.